Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. And tonight, what I wanted to go ahead and get started on was uh, another video uh, about some indicating. And this kind of derived from a video that was made by uh, Donald Cossett there on YouTube. He, uh, he had a job recently where he had shown some parts that he was building out of some square stock. And uh, you know, he was he was showing some indicating in the fore jaw and the lathe. And uh, I'd watched it and I posted up a comment and I told him, I said, hey, I got a, I got a couple tricks on indicating some uh, square pieces in the lathe that uh, I could throw on some video, show you guys. And uh, had a few responses and said, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you guys how I indicate a, a square piece in the fore jaw. So I've got a few pieces sitting here. The, uh, the main thing was going to be like this big square piece here. But I thought about while I'm talking about it, go ahead and add in another piece in there. Uh, show two different examples of indicating in a fore jaw. Uh, one would be setting up a piece like this big square right here where you want to get it running true and center in the lathe by indicating the sides and then the other would be like a work piece say like this block here this is something that I just that I found around here say you want to chuck this up in the lathe and and bore a hole through the center of it so what I'll probably do is um, I'll, I'll put me a punch mark in the center of this block and show you how I how I indicate a piece like this center or you know maybe you got a piece or somebody's got a piece of square stock like this that they want to true up and maybe they're not sure how to get it indicated that's what I want to show you is how to get a, uh, a square piece trued up in the in the fore jaw but what we'll start with and, and what was really the main focus of, of the discussion here was taking a piece of square stock like this and getting it true Running, uh, running true in the fore jaw. So I found this piece, it's something I had down here, and uh, this is a piece of uh, three inch square cold rolled. This is, uh, I'm sure this is 1018 cold rolled. It's got the nice smooth finish on it, don't have no scale on it. So I'm gonna use this as the sample to uh, indicate square. And uh, once I do this, and I'll show you how to indicate this, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll set this piece up. This was another piece that I had found. I thought about maybe using this, but uh, I haven't decided yet. It might be one of these two here that I did, that I show on the other, the other example. So before I get started, there's actually, there's a few different ways you can do this kind of, this kind of work. And the one way that you can do it, it's a little more uh, time consuming, a little bit more set up, is actually like the way I'm going to show you how to indicate this. If, if you've got a piece of square and you want to take the time to do it, you could actually set this in the mill and you've got to, you've got to get it square. And what you do is, um, you don't necessarily have to have the face square, it helps if you do, but what you need to do is put you a center point or like a uh, drill a center in the center of this in the milling machine and then you can indicate it a different way which was which is actually going to be indicating like this piece here but if you don't want to go through all that and you just got a piece of square stock that you want to throw in the fore jaw get it trued up and start doing some work on it um, that's how I'm going to show you how to indicate this here so I'll start with this one and I'll show you how I do. Now, I will point out, and, and I believe I already said this, is that now my dad showed me how to indicate something, uh, a, four, uh, a square piece in the fore jaw, and there's, there's a few different ways you can do it. Now, being this, this is a piece of cold roll, it's pretty much on size, it's square. The, the corners is what you got to look at. It, it depends on how true this really got to be. Uh, this has got some pretty banged up corners like that. That's pretty eat up right there on that corner. 
But one way that my dad had showed me years ago is that you can take your indicator and if you got like a, a button tip that you can put on the end so you got a, a nice wide radius on the end of your indicator, you can just indicate the corners of it just like you would a piece of round. You can do it that way. But I actually had a job that, that I had to do a while back. I had a bunch of pieces, some big square pieces that I had to set up in the big lathe and do some um, boring, some drilling and boring. And the pieces, they had to be indicated completely concentric. I mean, I, I did have a tolerance, but it needed to be close. So I didn't want to go off just the corners. So I wanted to go off the flats and make sure the hole was true with the flats of the square stock. So I started messing with it when I had to do that job and I just kind of figured out my own way that made sense to me. So that's what I'm going to show you is that technique there. And I'm going to use my, uh, my one inch, uh, or my, that's not a one inch, but you know, my stair indicator that you've already seen me use before. And, uh, this is actually my, uh, this is actually my new Noga holder that I purchased just to, uh, last week. I wanted another one with the bottom fine adjustment on it. The other one that you've seen me use, which is what the camera's mounted to right now, has a top fine adjustment up here. But I actually like this one better. So I picked me up another one. The, these were on sale at MSC. So I grabbed me another one because I wanted another, another indicator holder anyway so that I could have pretty much a, a, a dedicated holder for the camera and then one for my indicator. So this is what I'm going to use to do, do my indicating is this no gold right here. And uh, so I'm going to go, go ahead and uh, get the lay set up and get this piece chucked up. And I'm going to show you how I indicate it, all right? All right, guys, I got you over here on the Monarch. I done got the forge all set. And there's the piece that we're going to do some indicating on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it in here. And when you stick it in, you want to try to try to get it as square as you can before you tighten them down. Got her chucked up. <coughs> now I might play with some different cam uh, uh, camera angles. I might even get that head, head strap out and uh, try it. I haven't decided yet. I'm just kind of go. I'm just going to go with the flow here and see how it turns out. So the first thing that we're going to do, I'm get my indicator over here. And I want to get you positioned where I know you can. Where I know you can see this. All right. The first thing I want to do. Get my indicator over here. And what you want to do is straighten two sides and make sure that it's straight. Okay. And it doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter where the indicator is at. See, this is that fine adjust that's on the bottom here. You can adjust that screw and bring the indicator where you want. So just leave the chuck alone. What you want to do is just run this back. And I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like I'm within a half a thousandth already, okay? But if this was off, what you do is go ahead and and bump this, bump this side. I use my little lead knocker and bump this side until you get this running straight. You just run your indicator back and forth. All right. So you get one side straight, come off. All right, come to another side here. Pull your indicator rod back. Just find you a good spot there. And find adjust the bottom here and bring it to a zero. 
All right, and run this one back. Okay. Now see, we're off on that side. About five thousandths. All right. So I'll take my lid, give it a couple taps. That's closer. That's went in about two. That's went in about one. That ain't bad right there. But that's still within about one thousandths. Right, that got it closer there. All right, so that's went in about a half a thousandth right there. And of course, you can go back and you can double check if you want. Find you a zero, leave the chuck alone. That's pretty straight. All right, so that's the first step. You want to get the block in line with the spindle. It doesn't matter how far out it is, just get two sides straight. Once you get those two sides straight, then we'll start indicating the sides. So what I'm going to do, all right, let me make sure that you're going to get a good, uh, a good shot of this. Tell you what, let me reset. I'm going to move the light so you can get a little better shot of this, and I'll, uh, I'll probably move the camera around, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I got you on the head strap, and I wanted to give you a little bit of shot with it mounted at my point of view. And I don't know how this is going to turn out, so I'm just going to give this a shot here. And then I'm probably going to set my camera back up over here on the compound somewhere, right here on the carriage. There's my other, uh, that's, that's the actual mount for the camera there. But uh, I want to see how this turns out. So what I got is Monoga mounted up here on the compound and I've got it up here so that I can use the cross slide to feed the indicator in and out. So what you want to do is uh, start with a side all right, and bring your indicator in and come up and uh, just touch it and you see you want to rotate it and what you're looking for is the lowest point and that's what you're that's what you're adjusting is the lowest point see I, I don't know if you can see it because of the glare on the indicator but so I'm just gonna set this one on zero okay um, it doesn't matter if it's exactly on center it, it will make a difference if you're close but you can adjust your indicator to where you're you're about on center. So really, all I'm looking for right here is your lowest point. So on this side right here, we're going to work 180 out. So I've got that on zero. So you crank your indicator back out of the way, rotate 180. You want to bring it in, and I can see it's already off because I'm going to have to pull the indicator back. All right, my lowest point is approximately on the uh, the 35 so it's high this direction so what I want to do is loosen this jaw and tighten that one and this is this is how it works I'm just gonna keep working that all right and you rotate it you see where your lowest point is and it's showing about on 41. So I'm going to come back around, loosen that one, and tighten that one. Come back and you check it again. All right, that's about 41. about 15 thousandths off all right loosen that one a little bit it snugged that one and come back in 
you just want to watch your indicator and find your lowest point if it helps you you can do this move your cross slide and set you a zero we'll move this around all right there's your zero on that side and we're going to rotate it 180 come back in all right i'm low about nine thousandths right there so i'm going to tighten that sucker up a little bit and see if i get any all right so our lowest point between four and five minus minus two okay that's got us pretty close right there that's minus three it's nearly five so we're about off two thousands right there I'm just trying to set a zero so it's a little bit easier to see all right so i'm rocking it at zero rotate at 180 come back in and i'm rocking i'm looking for the lowest point and it's actually maybe a thousandths and a half okay so we've got so we've got these two sides pretty well center you know a thousandths to two thousandths off so now we got to work on this side so um, what I want to do is go ahead and take the camera back off the head strap and put it on a mount so it's a little more stable. I'm not jumping around. And, uh, and we'll do the other two sides with it on the camera mount. All right. Got you another position there where hopefully it's not as shaky. And I believe this was the two sides that I just indicated. Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is come to this this side here. All right, it's not even touching the indicator. So that's telling me that's going to be a low side. So I'm going to back off, bring 180. All right, so we're off quite a bit. So this is a high side here. So what I want to do is bring it to this side. I'm going to loosen this jaw push this side over tighten it I'm gonna come in and rock it till I get a zero all right we're on zero there I'm off quite a bit there so I think I moved it too far actually didn't I All right, so let me loosen, loosen this one a little bit and snug this one. All right, it's about 34 and a half. That's on 15, so that's your low. This will be your high, so this is the side you want to push. So we'll come around to this side bump it loose a little bit bring it 180 snug it a little bit all right I'll reset a zero all right there's a zero there all right this is your low side I'm about six thousandths low I'm just gonna barely loosen it and snug that one a little bit I'm just working the cross slide there to get it to zero. And uh, I think you guys can see that dial pretty good. I'm looking at it on my phone. There's zero. And uh, just about two thousandths low. So I'm gonna come back to this side that was on zero. I'm gonna get another little squeeze. See if I can get into that out. All right, it's minus one. All 
minus a half. So we're pretty well trued up on that side, okay? I'll show you again. Minus one. That's almost one. Well, I mean, we're pretty well, we're pretty well true there. That's within a half a thousandths. All right, so I want to come back to this side that we started with. I'm going to check it. Got a little bump in there. All right, that, that's right at a plus one. All right, so we moved it a little bit. What we've got to do is readjust this side. That's uh, it's minus one. So this is your high side. What I'm going to do is give it another little squeeze. Getting pretty tight though. Come back in, rock it. All right, there's zero. Minus one. So I might be able to get it out just by tightening it a little bit more. about a half all right that one's just under zero so I'm gonna call that one done and then you can check it again come back to this side it's minus one that one's about minus one so that is pretty well indicated now you can tweak it and turn it you know out of square so what you can do is bring it back on your side run the indicator down and you see that's that's exactly what I've done so even though I've got this out here running center here it's not straight that side's not bad now that's about a thousandths there We're a pretty good ways off on that side, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one give it a little thump. This one in about three. got them jaws pretty tight and that's what in about two right there that's still about two all right I hope you get in the, the picture here though is run your indicator down the sides back and forth get the side straight That's still close. All right, then you can come back and you can check. I'm gonna have to indicate it again. All right, that's zero there. All right, plus five. Minus five. So I'm off from bumping it there. So there's, there's your low. So what I'm gonna do is loosen that a little bit snug that one and recheck it it's 10 minus 2 loosen your low tighten your high All right, that's about a thousandths or a thousandths and a half off right there. All right, so we're going to come back to this side. It's plus seven. That's your low. Bump that loose just a bit. Snug that side. 
plus three, plus three and a half. All right, so I pretty well got it centered up. There's plus three. There's plus five. It's off a little bit. Let me see if I can snug it. I'm still off about one and a half. But I pretty well got it true. You know, you can chase these numbers all day long trying to get it dead nuts perfect. But this right here, if I was doing something on that, that that'd be that's very close to being running perfectly true. It ain't off much. I'll go ahead and fire it up. We'll see it spin just a little bit. It looks to me like it's running pretty true. Alright, so that's how I indicate a piece of square in the chuck. And of course, if I'm not talking to a camera and, and trying to show you what I'm doing, I can get it done faster. But as I just showed you, you, know, you get your indicator set and you just rock it to find your low. You back it off, you come back in and you keep rocking it on your you know, 180 degree out and seeing where your high, where your low is. And then you adjust your chuck jaw accordingly or you bump it if it ain't straight. Alright, I hope you guys got that. So, that's going to be about the end of indicating this piece. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to take that other piece that I showed you earlier on the bench. I'm going to uh, put me a punch mark in there and we're going to chuck that up. I'm going to show you how I indicate that one center too, alright? Alright guys, so moving on to the next piece. Alright, there's a little aluminum square block that I found. I went ahead and just uh, used my calipers and found the center scribed me a little line and then made me a punch mark I didn't center drill it so this is just a punch mark and uh, I've got my jaw set so you're gonna see me go ahead and chuck it up and indicate it here Let's see I had it set this isn't cut completely square here and what I want to do is just kind of when I stick it in there I'm gonna eyeball it the edge of the uh, the back of the piece with the grooves on the chuck and just lightly just lightly snug it up so the first thing that I'm going to do I don't look too bad does it <laughs> Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to bump the face true. So I'm going to run my indicator up in here and uh, I'm kind of I'm crunched in. I'm, I'm trying to get the camera up in here to close so you can see it. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is get this face running true. And this is just usually the way I do it. Um, it is a little tight for space, but it, I always make it work for me. Alright, so you want to look for your highs and your lows. This is your high side, there's your low side. So I want to come around here and just... You want to tap your highs. All right, now it's moved. There's your high side here. We're off about 15. All right, now we're we're within two to three thousandths right here. That's not bad. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. That's not bad there. The uh, the face isn't completely flat because I've used this 
for some other stuff it's been beat on so I got some high and low spots but so the face I'm just gonna call that true there so I'm gonna move my indicator back out of the way now what I'm gonna do you can you should be able to see the center here it's in the tail stock what I'm gonna do is run a center between centers so I've got a nice dead center right here this is a carbide point uh, this is one of my nicer ones, so I grabbed it. Still got a nice point on the end, and I'm going to put it between the punch mark and the center here. So I'm going to have to run you up a little bit, so I got a little bit more room. And I'm going to put that in the punch mark. I'm going to run my tailstock up, get it locked, and I'm going to crank it in. Until it's in the, the back center of that tail stock there. I mean the uh, the dead center. I mean, and you just just snug it. You know you don't want it real tight pushing on it. All right, so so you're running between centers. So now it comes to the easy part. Set your indicator in here. All right, so we're off a good 50 to 60 thousandths. So, and I don't have it very tight, so you want to start with your high. That's going to be your high, so I'm going to snug it a little bit. All right, there's your low, so I'm going to bump it a little loose. Come around, tighten your high. And I'm just going to keep working the highs and the lows. Just focusing on the two jaws. All right, so now it's now it's kind of work to the other two jaws. So there's your high, there's your low. I'm gonna make sure that this one's snug. See, it's pretty loose. I'm just I want to make sure you guys can see this. All right, there's your low. And now I go back to the other two jaws. Low, and here's your high. Just keep finding that high. Now we're within just a couple thousand, so you just want to snug the highs. So we're we're within one thousandths right there. That's low. This is high. So I can get it a little bit more. There's low. There's high. The uh, the indicator's jumping on this center. It's got, you know, it's a little dirty. I haven't used it in a while. Uh, that's what I like about that fine adjust on the bottom. You can just turn that screw and. All right, so I'd say that's true on the punch mark. Now that the punch mark's not a precision located hole. If you want it really precision, you know, you'd put this in the middle of the machine, you'd find center of the block, drill you a real tiny center drill hole, and then put the center in there. But if you're locating a punch mark, that's what I did there. You can see we're within a half a thousandths. Then when you're done, just uh, you know, move your indicator, back off on the tailstock, take your center out. Now typically what you do is go back and check your face because sometimes it'll move out a little bit. If your face is out, you've got to re-indicate the face, then put your center back in here and check it again. Sometimes you got to do that two or three times to get it dead nuts true. But uh, I just wanted to give you an example of how to do this, so I'm not going to worry about the face right now. There it is. That part's ready to drill. Alright guys, well that's it. That's my take on indicating a square piece in the four jaw chuck. I hope that you understood what I was trying to show you and I didn't rush through it too fast. 
but I was kind of showing you, you know, toward the end of indicating this piece, you know, kind of how, how quick I worked the lathe, running that indicator in and out, and uh, getting this piece set up. Because when you got a bunch of them to do, you know, you don't want to, in a production shop, you know, like, like I had, you don't want to spend a bunch of time indicating every piece. So I tried to get it in there and get it indicated really quick so I could get to my machine work. Uh, so I, I really hope that that helped some guys and that you understood it. If, if you have any questions about what I did, you know, feel free to ask me. Uh, I'll try to answer anything that's, uh, that's thrown at me. But I really did hope that this uh, helped out. Donald, <laughs> I hope this helped you out, man. I know you had your own little technique where you were trying to, uh, it looked like you had a square that you were setting on the way of the lathe there and trying to get the side uh, squared up and then uh, checking it with your indicator. I believe you were running your indicator. You already had it set maybe, but you've seen how I do it. You know, I just, I keep running my indicator in and out and rocking it just to, to find your low spot and your high spot. So that, that's how I do that, you know. And then this piece here, I showed you how I located the center of this. Anytime I've got a, uh, a part like this, something similar that's square and flat, that I want to find a uh, center, that's how I do it in the lathe. I bump the face true, and then I run a center in between another center, and uh, use my indicator on the OD of the center and, and uh, get it indicated square. So that's that. Again, I, I hope that helped out some guys. I, I really do. I've had a few people ask me about it, and, and I want to show it. And uh, Tom, he, he asked me if I'd go ahead and, and throw this in a video because I think he was looking forward to seeing my technique on this also. So uh, that's it. And uh, that's about it for this video. And uh, I'll be back soon. i got some more stuff to show you. I've got a list, uh, guys, I've been taking a list of all the stuff that's been asked of me. There's, there's several things that people's asked me to touch on, and I'm going to try to get to it all. And, uh, you know, just trying to get the work done and everything also. So uh, this was sort of a quick one that, that wasn't really hard to make, so I wanted to go ahead and throw this out there. So uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, let me know what you think, all right? We'll see you next time.